can I seed yet? Can I top dress yet? These are some of the questions I've been asked of late and no, under no circumstance must you do either of those things. But today what I'm going to show you are some of the things you can be getting on with to make sure your lawn is in the best condition when spring hits. So stay with me and we'll show you what we're going to do. All right, so the first thing we're going to do today is we've got our Alex Sterling out. I've got the scarifying attachment in. What I'm going to do is we're going to give it a double green. We're going to go left to right and then up and down. And what this is going to do, it's going to take out a lot of the dieback that we've had over the last couple of months since I've not been. And it's going to pick up all the stalks. As you can see in the footage there, we've got a lot of things that have fallen off the horse chestnut and other trees around and I just left the stalks where the leaves to, used to be attached to. So what this is going to do, it's going to pick those up because just to go by hand picking them up, it's just too time consuming. So this does it all in one. So let's crack on with that and then we'll get it cut. All right, so that's the first pass done. Have a look at that. See all those twigs that we've pulled up that were buried in the lawn. Most of these we wouldn't have been able to get to because they were buried right at the bottom over time. The grass has grown up and left them behind. So we've done ourselves a favour there. We've got leaves, conker shells. So yeah, all that has come out. Better out than in, all that slimy growth. So we'll do the second pass now and then we'll see what we get on the second pass. I'm just going to leave it at the same height at what we're at because I'm quite happy with that. I don't want to uh, go any deeper. So let's get on with that now and we'll see the results after. All right, so that's the second pass, just the same amount, even more to exist time. Just going the other way, just picks up things that are maybe facing the same way as the scarifier, it can't pick it up because it's that way and everything's going that way anyway. So you go the other way and then instead of it being that way, it's that way. So then it can get picked up by the hooks like that. So yeah, so let's give it a cut. And before we do that, I'll just have a walk over and see how it looks. All right, so for end of Jan, Really, really happy with that, it looks great. But it's too flat because we've been over it with the rake and it's just a little bit damp. Uh, it's just winter growth, just a little bit fleshier than normal. So it's flattened it quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the rotary out, which is gonna have a better cutting action than the cylinder, which is just gonna follow the path of what's already there. And it will just roll it down even further, but the rotary will suck it up a little bit and give it a cut that way. So. Yeah, happy days. Who can't be happy with that in January? If you're not happy, you're never going to be happy. So let's get on with that here to now and get it cut and I'll talk about what height we're going to cut it at, etc. next. Okay, so the second job we're going to do today to get our lawn looking great for spring is give it a cut. I'm going to use the rotary just to give us that suction, just to pick up some of that flat grass and then the rotary action of the blade will cut it. What height we're going to cut it at? Today I'm just going to go on number two. It's on number four at the moment, so I'm just going to drop it down I'm not too concerned about how much we take off this time of year because it's not actively growing. It's not really going to know it's been cut, to be honest with you. So what we'll do is when we get to March and we scalp it, all that one third rule and everything goes out the window. So I'm not going to buy into that side of things. So let's just get it cut, see how it looks. And then we're going to feed it and everything anyway. So in a week or so, it's going to be back to normal. So don't worry about the height of cut. It's not something I take too much care of. Um, just keep it simple. All right, so that's cut, just taking half a bag off, which is great. So what we can do now is we can talk about fertiliser. Let's get on with it. All right, so another job we can be getting on with to make our lawn look great this spring. Before we do any fertilising is we can go around with our fork, picking out any annual meadow grass or digging out any weed grasses and replacing these with a patch maybe from the lawn where we've got a decent bit of grass and we can replace them and then reseed a bigger area somewhere else. Normally we have to do it here, but this year, because we've done it really well over the last couple of years, we don't have to do this this year. So as soon as March hits, end of March, we can get on with this lawn, scarified, overseeded, top dressed, and by end of April, this lawn is going to be looking smart rather than mid-June like it's been for the past few years. So that's a job you can get on with. Like I said, I can't because I haven't got any to dig out. So what we'll do now is we'll get on with our rise and shine. Right. The next job we've got to get on with today is a fertiliser, which is going to get our lawn looking great for spring as well. What we're going on with, we're using rise and shine today, our 1155 MPK fertiliser with 8% iron. Why are we putting this on now? 
because in the next eight weeks it's going to give us time to get it growing and then when we come to scarify at the end of March the lawn's already active so that when we seed and top dress the lawn's already ready to come back through and join the new growth of the seed so it'll all come through as one. Now there is one lawn kind of lawn that you don't want to be putting fertiliser on. If your lawn is looking really patchy all over we don't want to put any fertiliser on at all, any granular anyway, because we don't want that growth growing sideways. Because you've got a big patch, grass relies on other grasses to stand up, right? So the minute you have a patch, it's going to start leaning over like a pampas grass. And it's become, become hard to cut and you're going to get like ruts in the lawn when you're mowing. So try not to put any fertiliser on then. But here we've got good coverage all over. The iron content in there as well is going to knock back any moss that's lurking and just give us a general green up as well. So let's get that on. Just going to go on at 30 today on here. That's a nice hit. And then what we'll do is after that, we'll get on with our liquids and I'll show you about that when we do that. So let's get on with this. All right, so the next job we've got to do is get our part two of our fertilizer on five ingredients today but I've already got one in the tank. I've got water in there and I've noticed we've got a few dandelions knocking about so I'm going to knock those on the head with the resolver that I bought for the last job because I've got two. Use that in there. We are pushing it for that. If we use that any later than now you're going to end up not being able to seed because it's not worn off yet so you've got like eight weeks and then by the time your seeds come through that's knocked off another two maybe three in which time like your three months is over so pushing it for that. So what we're going to do is just going to go in with a full bottle of Grace, should be 600 going in, but I'm just going to show you that they're not harmful these, you can go more or less the whole thing, same with that, the only one you need to like follow the guidelines is Orbit, so we're just going to do, we're going to measure that out and that's why I've got the jug. Dan's Magic, as normal, I'm just going to put the whole bottle in, don't need to worry about my filter, because I know this is a clean, full wet agent. And measure out our orbit. So I need 600 of that in there. There you go. All in there like that. And that is ready to mix. Yeah, you're going to be famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this all on YouTube after. You'll be uh, famous. Do you want to go on or...? You're on. <laughs> what I was going to tell you about. Uh, Daniel Hibbert, lawn expert. Law it's about lawns. Yeah. There you go. Want to be a famous person. All right, so that's now ready to put on the lawn. If you remember in the last video, I told you I was a referee. Uh, for those of you who didn't already know, I refereed 20 years ago now. Uh, lasted four years, but I was too outspoken, so I had to give it up, really, because in that industry, it's speak when spoken to. It's a bit old-fashioned, and that's not me. But I did meet up and go out with a few people. Howard Webb was one of them. I'll tell you about that story another time, but... Uh, a Premier League referee at the moment, Michael Salisbury, yeah, knew him in times of when he was like 18, 19. We went on a referees tour down to Newquay. Uh, Darren Bond, who's a Premier League referee, he was there. Peter Gooch, who was a, I think he's a linesman now. Darren Hanley, he's a Football League referee. And Natalie Walker, who's called Natalie Aspinall now. She's on the Women's FIFA register. She was there as well. Uh, so, yeah, so we went to Sailors Nightclub in Newquay. Uh, and me and Michael Salisbury were last out. We danced with Darren Bond, uh, but he obviously a lightweight, he went on. But me and Michael Salisbury, he was like 19, I was, what, 24 or something like that, 25. One, um, walking onto Fishtrel Beach, played football, two o'clock in the morning. How good is that? So we've got a bit of history. And if you ever see him, tell him, just say, Danny Abbott says you made his career. And he'll go, he did, he did. And we were, I lined for him at Exton Villa because he was a level higher than me, even though he was like 19, very cool head. If he was a, a GP, and if he was sat in an office 
in a GP's office and they said there's your doctor, then you wouldn't argue because he's just got that level-headedness is what you need for a referee. So that's why he's going to make it. Even though he's getting a bit of a rough time at the minute, he will be one of the best ones just because he's got a really level head. So we were at Exton Villa. This guy crosses the ball in and the defender puts his hand up and knocks it away. And I'm like, he's just unballed that. Michael looks at me because he was going to play on. And I went, no, no, penalty. Flag across the chest, penalty. And after the game, he said, great decision. That's one of the best decisions I've ever had because I'd have played on. So well done for not bottling it. So there's a story about Michael Salisbury. Good guy. So don't give him any grief if he gets any decisions wrong. We're all human. We're all learning just like we are now. So let's get this on and we'll save the Howard Webb story for another video. All right, so that's the spraying done. Now, one thing I forgot to say was that if you have got quite a big moss problem, there's no problem in maybe exchanging half your Dan's Winter Magic for half inhibit, that's fine, or just go in with a full inhibit. But if you're going with a full inhibit, you're not going to get the special ingredients in the Dan's Winter Magic. So I like to do half and half. Um, but if you really want to give it a big hit, it won't cause any major problems. You could go in with all your inhibit and Dan's Magic as well. You're just going to be getting quite a big hit of iron. So again, no problem, but just to be safe, just because I don't know what kind of lawn you've got, you could just do half and half of each and that'll be absolutely fine. So what we'll do now is put this away, then I can go home. All right, that's this video done. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one on how to get your lawn looking great for spring and I'll give you the inspiration for you to go out in the weekend and get it done yourself. You'll thank me in the long run when your lawn's looking great and it'll come back quicker once we do all the scarifying, etc. Top dressing, overseeding, etc., etc. Now, talking about top dressing, we've still got the code. Remember, 10% off at Field Compost on the Field Compost number four, DHLE10. Why not think about getting it in early and beat the rush so you're guaranteed to get some early? But other than that, nothing else to talk about here other than me going home, putting my feet up for the rest of the day, obviously getting this edited. So join us next time when we're doing something else lawn related here on Daniel Hibbert Lawn Expert. Bye for now.